and um, it's not the correct term, but it just it sort of reminds me of this. Like there's a crack of some sort, and all this water gathers here, and it is perfect for birding as well as the hyenas like to lay in it. And we have a yellow-billed stork here, which is beautiful. I wish we could get a break in the clouds now. Uh, you can't really, oh, there comes a spoonbill again. So we've also got an African spoonbill and we have a Goliath heron, which we'll show you is in the far corner. And it's just amazing the different types of fishing techniques that these birds will use. Obviously, it doesn't look like the Goliath heron, the largest heron in the world, is uh, doing much at the moment, except just walking through the water. Uh, and maybe it's going to find a tree to roost on. It is getting a little bit dark now. So they've obviously got a very sharp spear-like beak, which they will try and stab through a fish, as you would if you were spear fishing. That's what they will try and do. They'll plunge their long necks into the water and sometimes stick their whole heads under the water too and catch frogs and catch fish. Uh, anything, maybe even a small terrapin it would probably take, uh, quite a little one. I mean, they're, they're massive birds. And then you've got... The others, well, for instance, the African, oh, we'll go, okay, we can go to the storky, the yellow-billed stork, who stands with its beak gape and does different types of techniques there. It's going to the grassy spots and using its feet and moving around and stirring the water up to try and chase out some of those smaller invertebrates and fish. Sammy Jane, you said that you love watching these birds fish. It is amazing. I could sit here the entire day. And... And that's an amazing technique. And then when we first saw the stork, we saw it doing something completely different. It just had its mouth open, or its mouth, its beak agape, and waiting to snap a fish. Whee! That's like me when I go to the beach and something touches my foot in the water. I leap, but I leap much further out of the water, um, I, unfortunately. So something must have tickled its foot, maybe a little terrapin uh, moving across, or a fish. And then, of course, look at that, the spoonbill stealing the show there. So the spoonbill also fish, likes to fish. A lot of people get confused and think that they're filter feeders, but they're not. So also opening its beak and is trying to flush out by moving its bill from side to side, trying to snap up any little critters. And I really hope if we sit here for long enough, we will be successful and we'll be able to see something like this. But they're beautiful birds. It's... um something that we we don't get to sit and watch very often and i love my birding i really do i find it absolutely fascinating oh hang on did the stork get something look like it won't no unlucky hmm. maybe a little a little insect of sort maybe a tiny little fish that the spoonbill got come on one of you catch something for us i feel like we've invested so much time now look how they're coming right to the edge and they've settled down with us which was quite nice. They were a bit nervous and they moved away when we first arrived here. Yeah, and, and normally that happens with birds and well, sometimes with the animals too, is that they'll move away from you. But if you just sit quietly and you sit in the same spot, they'll relax and they'll come back to you. So this is, again, quite interesting. They, you know, it looks like they're not really working together, but they're moving in the same direction. So if one of them, you know, chases a fish out or a frog out, the other one's got a chance of catching it if it misses. Now, Riti, wondering if there's this particular type of fish that they feed on, or if it's just any fish. It's, it's just anything. Uh, I'm sure there's tilapia of sorts in here. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even be able to tell you which type of tilapia. I have yet to see any fish. Um, there's definitely some catfish uh, swimming around in here, and maybe some smaller little species as well. Uh, I'm not actually familiar with the, the types of fish that are around here. I'll have to get a book and and have a little look i'm sure there'll be uh, lots of smaller species of fish too maybe some, no i don't think you get sickles up here maybe in the lakes and things but not maybe not on the river but there they go off they go again an odd couple <laughs> look at that i just love the way that they just change up and particularly the stalk the way that it just you know changes its feeding techniques and quite regularly, because now since we've been sitting here, it's, I think it's done about three times where it's either just walked uh, with its beak open, hoping to, you know, snap something right in between its beak, and or then it uses its foot when it gets to those grassy bits. And that's where the fish will also go, because remember, on a hot day, there's not much shade around, but those bits of grass will most certainly cast a shadow. And that's sometimes what the herons like to do. 
um, you know, the black heron, for example, that folds its wings into an umbrella and hides, it he it hides its head. They'll do that out in the open and the fish are attracted to that. And they will come through and sit right underneath it where it is in striking range. So the fishing techniques of birds is absolutely incredible to a certain scene. All we need now is a kingfisher sitting on the edge of the bank ready to spear its sharp beak into the water. Oh, Dina, you've said that the spoonbill is number 30 on your Mara list. Congratulations. Actually, I need to add a few more birds to my list too. Shall I do that while I'm here? While you watch the birds, let me find it. I have to find a pen though. Where is my pen? And the page. Ooh, hello. There's another stalk. What's going on over here? Look at the beautiful colors of the plumage of this one. Now, they're both the same species. Why is one bigger than the other? Is one a juvenile or one a male or one a female? Let me get my phone out. I want to have a quick look and see who is larger. That's quite interesting. Not sure. No, no. These apps, they all just open at the same time. Isn't that ridiculous? Kestrel Fox, you're wondering if you get the black heron yet? I have yet to see it. Um, I don't think so. I don't think it occurs here. They were in Zambia, if I'm not mistaken. I think I remember seeing black heron. Yes, I did see black herons on the Zimbizi River and the tributaries. Um, but I have not seen them here. But I haven't really had a chance to do much birding at all. What am I looking for? Stalk. I, see, I get so distracted, I can't concentrate on my original plan. Let's go. Yellow billed stalk. Let's see who is larger. Um, must be a juvenile. I'm just thinking because the size difference is quite big. So maybe this one is just a youngster and hasn't quite grown into itself just yet. But there's a. But I'm not going crazy. Can you see a pink tinge? You can, hey. Mm, okay, and a few of you have also noticed that, so that's quite interesting. Typically, you start to see that with um, flamingos when they are eating um, shellfish. It normally enhances that pink color. I've forgotten what the chemical is called now for the life of me. I apologize. I have not spoken about flamingos and their coloration for a very, very long time because uh, I have yet to see a flamingo in the sabi sand, although I have heard of some stories, and Brent's telling stories, about uh, them being at Singita or Londolozi at one point. Um... But, but yes, I wonder if it's just not, it's di diet related perhaps. Again, I've, this first time I've actually seen it on a yellow billed stalk. But interesting, but much larger than the other. You can see it when it again came crash landing in. And look at this one, look at the different technique now, completely submerging its bill and moving it from side to side and just standing stationary. So isn't this, isn't this fantastic how we're sitting here and observing the various fishing techniques. Oh, fantastic. So Tristan is going to go on and on and on about when you go back to him about the uh, animals and their pinkish tinge. I've completely forgotten what all the special words are and all that. So we'll, we'll go to him. And But it's got it's diet related. And I know that in zoos and bird sanctuaries and stuff like that, what they often do is they're quite sneaky because that's not what really the um, flamingos are feeding. They're normally fed a type of, you know, food. And they'll put food coloring in the water to true enhance their colors which i think is a bit of a cheat <laughs> but there we go so that seems to be the stock standard thing as soon as you find grassy patches you stick your feet in there and you give it a bit of a wriggle and hope that something comes out doesn't 